So here we go again. Um, in this lesson, I want to show you how to uh, create just a few, just have a little experiment really, and 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 see what happens. Um, in one of my previous videos, you noticed that I'd set up a new palette, and so I'm experimenting. So here are the colours that I'd set up, and I, and I showed you how to construct this. And here's the actual palette itself, uh, with all of my colours in. Um, this is just a, uh, a number 12 round, we're just going to have a little experiment with some of these. I've got our paper here, I'm not really going to construct the picture, but we'll just have a little experimentation and um, see what happens. So I will uh, comment on um, which colours I'm using and point to some of them on this little chart. You can see that mirrors what's here. So I've already mixed up three colours, I've mixed up some ultramarine blue which is in this palette here, ultramarine. Um, in this left hand side I've mixed up some burnt umber which is just here. It relates to over here, burnt umber and here in the palette just there and the, in the middle well of, the, of a mixture of the two so it's the two mixed together so let's just have a quick look and, and see what they they look like on the on the paper um, there we go just see that there that was just the burnt umber and here's the ultramarine so you can just see and you can see if you go quickly and you kind of drag and pull off, so the motion is 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 almost like in a in a, in a slight arch. Um, so you can see where it drags off, and you can see these tiny speckles in between, and that's what's called sparkle. And this is like a dry brush technique, so you just drag on, drag off. Let's try it here with this um, burnt umber. So we drag up. There you go. It's about speed. It's like pulling up. So you pull up the brush. You see that. If I go back the other way, which I don't normally do, you can see it working again that way. And obviously it depends how much paint you have on your brush to the effect. The more paint that I have on my brush, you've got more paint in here and less there. If I take less, it makes it, you can see, less paint. So I haven't dipped back in yet, so we've got less paint. And if I go again, so it's getting drier and the effect is greater. Yeah, so I hope you can see that. And I'm going to mix up some water and just mix this in a little bit because we might create a little bit of a picture here. So the great thing about watercolour is you can go back into it and you can mess around with it. There are some really strange myths. A lot of these myths came about um, probably over 100 years ago that watercolour is a difficult medium that you can't go back into, that you can't mess around with, you'll ruin it, you'll wreck it, everything will turn out like mud. Well, maybe that was true for some painters, but it's not true now. I think paints have come on, the actual quality of paints. So you can do that. And the other thing that you can always do is re-wet the paper. I have a spray that I spray into if, it, if I want to just rework something. So don't ever worry about things like going in. And, and you know, I would challenge a lot of these myths about reworking things. You can, to a degree. Depends the colors you choose. Anyway, that's getting into the technical stuff. So, um, there we go. I'm just gonna, gonna wet the paper here. This is just pure water. And one of my favorite colors to mess around with is the raw sienna and uh, yellow ochre mix there. Um, so let's just pop it in and see what happens. Just move it around a little bit. There we go. Just put in some clear water and move it up. Clear water is good to use for skies. Um, not all the time, but sometimes it depends on the effect you want. You can see where there's uh, patches that have not caught water. And if we pop in some blue, we can start to just very quickly create a sky. And we can leave patches that are uh, not touched. And this will start to blend and bleed in. Normally I have my um, watercolour easel and the paper on it at an angle. So normally at quite a steep angle, about 30 or 40 degrees. But here we haven't got that today, so we'll just just let it do its own thing. And, and that in itself is a, is a lovely lesson. Here's the mixture that we had earlier. So 
and we can pop some of that in at the top as well. Um, so the, the primaries that we're using, we've got our okra, we've got there, we've got our ultramarine, and we've got our umber. And you can, if you're very studious and quite clever about it, I guess, come up with some nice sort of greys. So, there we go. Let's just leave that for the moment. So, we have kind of a sky, kind of a foreground, could be an ocean, with the blue in there. And that's just having a little practice really and just a kind of a little mess around. Let's bring in some more of the burnt umber. Let's wash it off. Let's bring in some more. Actually, we'll clean that out slightly because it's got a bit polluted. Um, just clean that off. And here we've got our ultramarine mix. In the middle, we've got a mixture of the two, haven't we, if you remember? So we'll go back in and just add some more of that. And last but not least, we add a touch of yellow ochre going in there. You can see that's kind of gone greeny. Let's just dot this in and see what happens. This will now bleed in, so I'm just experimenting around. This is, you know, let's pretend this is a horizon along here. This is just going to bleed in. Yep, so it's going to bleed in. So this is just the three colours, just kind of messing around with those. I know if I, I dab this in because this is wet here, I'm going to put this ultramarine in here. It's going to going to flow quite a lot. Um. But if you look into the distance of many landscapes, you can see um, that in the distance, the trees do look quite blue, blue-gray in the background. So we'll just let that do its own thing. It's quite wet. And we'll leave that there. Coming a bit warmer down here. Warmer means what well, is warm and cool colours. Let's try and just bring in some here. What I like about this, you know, I haven't planned this out at all, as you can probably tell. Um, it's just experimentation. It's really nice to experiment sometimes without the pressure of trying to create, you know, anything for anyone. When you any sort of painting for anyone, it's just for your own fun, really just to experiment. Now I'm doing this because um, although I am familiar with uh, the brands that I have in here, which is Daniel Smith and along the middle here, I think I've said before that these are the St. Petersburg White Knights in the big pans and then a mixture of Windsor and Newton watercolours. Um, this combination, the way I'm working, I'm not familiar with. So I just want to have a, have a play around really. Let's just pop some more this umber. This is the white knight umber in here. Let's just put this in and just let it do its own thing. So it's blending around and just bleeding around. Blending and bleeding. Yep. It's starting to look a bit like a turner, isn't it? Interestingly, turner would use things like fingers and just, just get in there and blow things and take paint out. Remember, you can also use things like tissues to take paint out if you're not too enamoured with some something you've created. You just think, oh, actually, I wish. And also, the great thing about uh, paper tissue going back in is you can create a few more highlights that probably weren't there. You know, the, the paint will just kind of do its own thing and bleed in, but this can create some nice little... Uh, as I said, highlights in. Because this is still wet, it's still kind of blending and bleeding its its way in. Final little thing I'm going to do there. So just noticed on the camera angle. Just 
come down here. I'm not sure whether you can see that bit at the end. But at the end of this, we'll, we'll show you what happened. So that's the first stage. I've now need to dry this off. So I'm going to go away and get the hair dryer and, and dry this. So welcome back, and uh, this is this is quite dry now, almost dry. It's a little bit damp actually, but that's quite nice. I'm now going to move on to a number three brush. This is a, a finer brush, and start to put in some some detail. So we could leave this painting as it is. It's quite nice. We could could leave this a Turner-esque style, but just using these same three three hues, three colours. I'm now going to come in. Uh, and put back in some of the some of the umber, and I'm going to imagine that there's. I'm just feeling this at the back of my finger because we've got um, some dampness issues there, and that will blend and bleed. But I'm just going to imagine if we can create like a tunnel on the side, and we'll take our eye down into into the centre part of the picture. So I'm just going to see if I can put this in. It's quite strong. Uh, we might see some bleeding here. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's starting to bleed a little bit there. Um, in another one of my lessons, I show you it's all on on really tr twiggery and and I've got several on on trees and and how to construct trees. Uh, and that's always always good to be able to do. The thing is, is was this push on pull off. At the moment, it's looking a little bit uniform, so we'll. We'll take out, take it off somewhere, somewhere else. Um, we'll thicken up this base branch here, and we'll just lead this up. Taking the eye in, going to mix that. This is the the mix of the two, or the three actually, if you remember the three primaries. And you can see where that's blurring off there now. Some of it's dried, some of it's not. It's quite light tones at the moment, but that's quite good. We can go back into it before it dries, so here we go. So, a bit of explanation then, I'll just scratch out that look, that's quite nice. Um, trees, when you look at them, out in reality, most trees have just got so many branches, so many twigs, obviously, um, and obviously the main trunk. And the real golden rule is is to make sure that you're going from fat or thick, so at the base, to thin, even as the branches are doing a similar kind of thing. So the branches, as they come off, they're starting out however fat they are. So here we go, we're pushing down quite hard. And then we lift off, look. Yep, so you're pushing down hard. And then I'm lifting off. And that's the bit I think sometimes beginners don't don't see or it's not explained well enough to them. So I'm pushing down and then as I go up, I'm lifting off. Okay. Also we need to vary the tone. So as we go further from the trunk of the tree, things should be getting a lot lighter. Yeah. In touch. That's what I mean, not in tone of, of the paint, but there we go, in touch. Okay, and thinner, so you've got the twigs going thinner. That's that's kind of really it. You also want to vary the directions of um, the branches. Don't have them all going the same way. Because in reality, you'll find things like this happen. It will curl back in. Or you might get some of the called foreshortening, which is where we have the illusion of it coming closer towards us that branch there and there we go so nature throws up all kinds of anomalies the more you study them I think everyone has their own shorthand if you like for how they're gonna do a tree we'll just take that off here and we'll just make this a bit more uh, robust now I'm gonna mix up a kind of a gray with this um, burnt umber and ultramarine that's all we're using and just come in a little bit darker down the base and also just throw in some of the darker parts down here as well so it's going in there if you can hear some scratching in the background that's my cat trying to get in um, strangely enough 
when this has just got clear water in it, so I'm over here, she comes and drinks out of it. And I think she's just coming from outside and she needs a drink. I'll have to let her in in a second, but I need to clean that water out because uh, we don't want to get them poisoned from this paint. Oh, there she is. Poppy, her name is. She's been a bit of a pain. Anyway, there we go. So I just dropped in some of this other darker mix of burnt umber and ultramarine. I'll just scratch a few bits out here, which we did. Don't need to go too nuts on that. It's always quite nice to get some highlights going off. Uh, if Let's pretend the light's coming in this way, so we'd expect things to be a bit darker on the right hand side of this tree. And this is just experiment and I've got nothing in front of me as reference. Obviously if we're out in nature or I've got a picture in front of us, it's a lot different. You can actually get the feel of it. But this is just experimentation. It's not, not a, a finished painting, I'm not trying to get that in any way, shape or form. It's just a little bit of fun, a little bit of experimentation. And by doing that, we can just see what happens. Fingers are great, but sometimes we can overdo it. But you can always go back in and uh, tidy a few things up on there. Just warm it up in here. So you can see I'm just messing around really now and probably going a bit too far, but it's quite nice. I'm gonna go back to this round brush on this next part and I'm gonna get a drier mix of this umber. You can't see that, but I just had a little practice underneath. I can't show you that because it's below. And I'm just gonna go across and just define this horizon here. I'm gonna bring it down in here. Um, here we go. Just a bit of dry brush stroke. The reason, one of the things, the composition, I know this is not really a lesson on composition, but it's always worth talking about in the middle of some a painting demonstration like this is you don't want think you don't want your your paper in equal halves it's just not going to work so if you can see where i've now got um the brush going across there on the horizon if we come down and say it's kind of here we don't want things in equal halves you need to have either the sky dominating more or the foreground dominating more as we've got at the moment the sky is dominating slightly more also with focal points you need to have them not slap bang in the middle, it just doesn't work. You need to either have them to the left or to the right. This is a foil, we said we were gonna use trees here and on this side to like create a tunnel. Yep, so with that in mind, I better get back to uh, creating the tunnel. I'm not gonna have them come in, in the same angle either because if I just mirror what's on this right hand side, it's gonna look a bit weird. So we'll just, we'll have it coming in from a slightly different uh, perspective. I'm going to go down to a smaller brush to make that work a lot better. So we're going back into our umber again. Um, just to thicken up on some of these. Again, the same principle of lifting off slightly. Notice some sort of You've kind of got to, got to think design and angles and how you want things to look. This is going to be a lot sparser. Pushing things, branches towards the middle makes the eye go that way. So we need to bear that in mind when we're designing our paintings. Uh, it is about design, elements of design, big shapes, small shapes, what they call lost and found edges. So you see an edge that um, is very sharp and then goes blurred. It's all the opposites, big and small. At the moment, we haven't really demonstrated that because we're not doing a complete painting. I'm only doing a demonstration really on this Turner-esque sort of atmosphere, a wintry kind of starkness in the trees and a sparseness, really. Let's just put in a few bits of twiggery just here, there and everywhere, and that will do. Now we have to sit and think, well, how is that working? Do I need to go up higher as I did here? At the moment, this tree looks closer to us and this one a bit further away. And I'll probably leave that as it is for the moment. Just uh, put in a few stumps there. 
that's quite nice. And I can use this drier mix now to come across on the horizon just a bit and just not everywhere because it would look daft. Um, just to find some bits in the distance. Now I want to lead the eye in, so this could be a field. So originally, if you remember, we said, oh, this looks like it could be the ocean. Well, as this painting has developed, it, it looks less like water and more like a landscape, really. So with that in mind, let's just um, sort that out in the middle then. So we need a focal point. Focal points really where the light is like and dark as dark as and we'll kind of come here. I think we'll make the eye go there. At the moment we've used just three, just our umber and our ultramarine. We'll just pop them. So I'm not sure. Maybe I don't know. It's gonna be small. Normally your your focal point could be large. Let's pretend there's um church or a tower or some buildings back there let's, let's not let's not define them too much uh, because it's a sort of cooler color that'll go back as well I don't know let's just suggest something I'm just making this up it could be anything let's just suggest bits and bobs going back not gonna be too too precise about that it's just giving you an idea so I've got no reference in front of me so um, I'm really just thinking out of the box inside of my head um, we don't know what it is so there we go but that's given us a focal point now so the eye will definitely go there if we keep mixing up these two the uh, ultramarine and the umber we can get some quite nice variations on that just warmer in the front there Let's just put some more water in. It's a touch of that, otherwise we'll just have pure blue. Just get a few slightly different diagonals. Don't want everything the same. And then if I put in some water, we can suggest something at the back there. It's like a grey blue. I quite like the idea of this being being left um, in that grey blue there. And we can fiddle and fuss around forever, can't we? You know, it's all great fun. Just you know, have a go really, just have a go. I always kind of remember about highlights and to to bring them in if you can. They always look good your fingers in there. The last little thing to finish this painting off um, is some shadow. Now we're just going to slightly change it. I'm going to show you um, one more colour in here. It's a red to go with this blue and it's a lizard and crimson. There we go. And this can create a nice shadow. If we say the light was coming in from this side we actually have shadows coming across vary it a bit just coming in warm up a little bit let's add a more crimson in to the blue and we'll say it's night time or getting near night time it's not night time um, and that these shadows are quite long could also be more early morning couldn't it yeah let's take that one out of touch there could be more trees to the left pull a column across and we could have sort of some weaker shadows in there just pulling that over could lose some edges here just by taking some water and just adding it to it just to blur off some edges so it's not all sharp and then finally going dark here. Just go in with some blue. Just vary it up a little bit. And 
that's it. Just having a little experiment. We're done. Um, remember to subscribe. Remember to uh, have a look at my next video that's coming up. And uh, take care now. Happy painting. So this is the final paint then, unleashed, um, with all the tape taken off of it. Uh, I've got a little addition there, you can see I've brought in some ploughed uh, fields or suggestion of ploughed fields, which takes the eye towards the focal point. Those ploughed fields uh, were created by just dragging my fingernail through uh, the wet paint, the wet shadow, as I did with the trees, and then just adding in some burnt umber, obviously thicker at the foreground, and lighter touch going thinner towards the back. And that was that. So you can choose whether you like the one pre the ploughed field or this one. And uh, PPS, you'll see my cat, Poppy, sitting on my paintings. You've got no respect for art. Uh, taking a drink from my uh, watercolour collapsible lantern which she does every single day loads of times there's clean water in there now though isn't it Poppy? yeah